What's going on YouTube? CyberOptic here with a brand new video for you today. And in this video, we're gonna be talking about two different masks that were added to the workshop with the release of CS2. Now, the first mask that we're going to talk about is the material mask. If you have been working on projects and maybe you moved it over into the workshop and noticed that certain parts of the weapon did not look right, uh, this could most likely be because of the default materials that have been added to the model. And so the material mask is a way for you to be able to remove these default materials so that it can look more like how you had it inside of your project. Uh, the other mask that we're going to talk about is the pearlescent mask, and this can be a lot of fun to play around with, especially if you only want this effect added to certain parts of your design. Uh, so that's what we're going to talk about inside of this video today. So anyways, let's go. So the first thing I want to talk about inside of this video are material masks. Now for anyone who is unfamiliar with what these are, inside of the game they've actually added some default materials to certain parts of the weapon. Maybe you've already been working on a project and you moved it over into the workshop and you notice that certain parts of the weapon did not get the colors that you applied to them or maybe they looked a little bit off. They did not look exactly how you had them inside of your project. This is more than likely due to the default material that was added to that part of the weapon. So what Valve has done is they've actually given you a material mask and this works on a grayscale where white is going to have less of that default material added and then of course as you go down into blacks it's going to start adding that default material back to the weapon. Uh, so that in a nutshell is basically what material masks do inside of CS2. So to give you guys a visual representation of what the material mask does, I'm actually going to use one of my own projects where I had to add one. Now, if we take a look at this weapon, you'll notice that I've got this really nice gold hardware on the body of this weapon. However, if we look at things like the buttstock frame and also the magazine and muzzle, you'll notice that they look sort of plasticky. They don't quite look like the rest of the skin does. Now, whenever I was setting this project up, all of my colors matched. I also made sure and turned my roughness down so that some of these parts would be reflective. However, once I got it over into the workshop, this is actually how it looked. And this is because there are default materials that are added to certain parts of these weapons. Now, if we take a look at what this looks like with a material mask on, let's just turn it on real quick and hit preview again. Uh, once this loads up, we can take a look at this again. Now you'll notice the difference. The buttstock actually looks the color that it's supposed to be. Also, the parts on the magazine are reflective the way that I had them set up inside of my project. Uh, so this is what the material mask is used for. Inside of the video game, there are some default materials that are added to some of these models. And the way that you override those default materials is by using a material mask. There is another consideration that you have to make whenever you are using material masks. Now to demonstrate what I'm talking about, I have set my weapon all the way to battle scarred. If we take a look at the magazine, you will see that there is a little bit of wear around the gold pieces. However, you'll also notice that the center part of the magazine is still completely green. Whenever I was setting up my material mask for it, I made it completely white. Now, if we go in here and we turn our mask back off, let's just go ahead and turn this off and preview it. Now, if we take a look at this weapon, notice how the magazine is completely worn off. Uh, so that's just something you have to kind of keep in the back of your mind whenever you are setting up your material mask. It not only affects the default materials that are on those parts of the weapon, but it also affects how much wear that part of the weapon can actually have. So the next question is, how do you create your material mask? Now there's a lot of different methods that you could use for achieving this. One way of doing it would be to burn them off as roughness maps and just use your roughness slider right here to control the amount of white that each part is going to have. However, if you are going to use this method, just bear in mind that you are going to have to burn off a separate UV for every single part of your weapon. You're not going to only be able to burn it off for the parts that you're having 
trouble with. Now, to give you guys an example of this, I have created this UV very quickly. And what you'll notice is that I've made all of the parts that were giving me trouble white inside of my project and then left everything else black. However, if I was to take this over as a material mask and add it to my project, you'll now notice that I have troubles in a lot of other parts of my design. Uh, you'll notice that the body is a lot lighter. You'll also notice that the gold hardware is no longer reflective. And this is because those parts now have a black value behind them as part of my material mask. Uh, so that's just one thing I wanted to make you guys aware of. If you are going to use this method in order to create your material mask, just be aware that you need a mask for every single piece of your weapon inside of your design. Another method that you can use for creating your material masks is of course to use a diffuse map. Now, in my opinion, this is a lot easier than using the roughness maps. First and foremost, it gives you control over the background color. Uh, and not only that, but in most cases, you don't even need to burn off a mask for every single piece of your weapon. So real quickly, I wanna show you guys that process. So first and foremost, I'm going to go right down here to the bottom. I'm going to hit shift a and go to texture image texture. We want to click on new and give this a name. Let's just call this mask. We want to set our width and our height to be the same as all of our other UVs. And then finally, we just want to select the color for our mask. Then once all of this is set up, we can just click OK. Now, if you already have something connected to the base color on your principal BSDF, you can just disconnect it for now. Then once you've done that, we can just take this image texture and plug it into our base color. And as you can see, the color that we assigned to this image has now overridden our base color on our weapon. We can then go over to UV editing. We can set a bake type of diffuse. We can make sure that our direct and our indirect lighting is turned off. And then we can just bake this off as a diffuse map. Once you have all of your diffuse maps created, the next thing you're going to want to do is move over into another program such as Photoshop or GIMP. And you want to create a new project that is the same size as your UVs. Then once you have all of that set up, the first thing you're going to want to do is select a background color. Now, as you guys can see here, I am using white as my background color. That's because any of these pieces that sit outside of my diffuses, I want to make sure that none of these get any of that default material at all. While at the same time, by using these diffuses, I'm able to control the amount of masking on all of these other parts. Uh, so that's just another method that you can use for creating your material masks. In my opinion, this method is a little bit easier. For one, it gives you the ability to be able to control what the background color of this is. Uh, but not only that, because you can control this background color, it also means that you don't have to burn off nearly as many UVs as you would if you were using another method such as the roughness method. So the next thing we're going to talk about inside of this video is the pearlescent mask. Now, just like a lot of these masks, there are obviously a lot of gray areas in between white or black. You can play around with these once you have a base understanding of how this mask works. However, I'm going to approach this from the standpoint that most of you guys are probably either going to want this effect on or you're going to want it off. So real quickly, I'm going to explain to you exactly how it works. So first and foremost, whenever you're creating your mask for any parts of your weapon that you do not want pearlescent added to, you're going to use a false or a black value for it. And then for the parts where you do want the pearlescent, you're going to use a true value or a white value. Then once you have this set up inside of the workshop, you're just simply going to use the pearlescent scale in order to control the amount of pearlescent that each one of those white parts receives. Uh, so that's just sort of a basic overview of what the pearlescent mask does. So as you guys can see here, I have two different UV maps. The one on the left, of course, is going to be my color or my albedo map. And then the one on the right is going to be my pearlescent mask. Now, I basically just made this mask entirely black, and then I added this one white piece right here on the side of my slide. So the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to turn these into TGA files, and then I'm going to bring them over into the workshop so I can show you guys exactly how this looks. 
Now the first thing you will notice is that my pearlescent scale right here is set in the middle. If we take a look at this weapon, you will see that there are no changes at all. The slide is just entirely blue. However, if we go back to our workshop and we turn this up a little bit, and then we go and take a look at it inside of the game, now you'll notice how that part has that pearlescent effect added to it. Uh, so that's just sort of a basic rundown of how the pearlescent mask works inside of the workshop. This is just really something you kind of have to get in there and play around with to perfect it. However, once you have a base understanding of how it works, it'll be very easy for you to go in and start adding this to your projects. So this concludes my video on pearlescent and material masks, and hopefully you guys got some really good information out of this. Now, whenever you start working on these projects and you start to notice that things are a little bit off, uh, sometimes it can be caused by those default materials and knowing how to use those material masks to sort of override those materials can be extremely important inside of your project. Uh, also, with the pearlescent mask, there may be times in your project where you only want certain parts of your project to have that effect on it. So being able to know how to use those masks can be very helpful in coming up with some really cool designs of your own. Uh, so anyways, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I really appreciate it. If you would, please leave likes or comments down below and make sure and hit that subscribe button because it really helps this channel out a lot. Anyways, thank you guys so much and we'll see you in the next video.